When I say how, what I'm referring to is how did I model this? Because when you think about it, if you tried to model this yourself, it'd be a fucking nightmare, right? You need to set up a curve and it gets thicker and thinner over time and there's multiple of them and it twists. This seems like a very complicated thing to model. So I thought, uh, let me just make a tutorial about how I made this mesh and meshes similar to it. Um, and as you might've guessed, since all I ever do is touch geometry nodes, I'm all there like massaging geometry nodes and noodles. Um, you might've guessed that this is geometry nodes. And in fact it is, we can control the number of arms. Uh, we can control the twist amount. There's actually more we can control in the node group, but this is all I exposed. Uh, so let's talk about how to make complicated meshes like this so that hopefully uh, you're not in a position where I quiz you and I'm like, do you know how to make this? And you're like, no. Um, so let, let, let's get you up to speed. So take the cube, delete the cube, add a new one. That, that's the first step. We don't want the default cube. Uh, the rest of this is just gonna be geometry nodes and we're not even gonna use the cube. Uh, so the question is, how do you make this mesh? Well, that animation I showed you in the beginning uh, kind of gives you the hint, right? We had a couple pillars and then I kind of twist and connect them. Um, so that, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a couple pillars and we're gonna twist and connect them. Namely, I'm gonna make a bunch of curves in a circle. That's gonna be the first step. So a lot of this might not seem intuitive because it's kind of a complicated thing to model, but just follow along. So I have a mesh circle composed of however many points I want. And what I want is for each of these points, instance on points, uh, to get like a pillar or a curve facing upward. So that's why I'm instancing on each of these points. I'm gonna instance a curve line, okay? And I'm gonna make these a bit taller. Let's have them be five units tall. Uh, so what we have so far is a setup that procedurally makes the arms of the twisty thing. Um, and really all we have to do at this point is have these uh, curves twist together and then pinch at the top and the bottom, right? So before we do that, if we want this to twist, we need this to have more geometry. So I'm gonna take each of these curved lines and make sure there's 10 points as we go upwards here. So there's gonna be 10 on each. So there's gonna be, let's make this six, 60 uh, vertices total or control points. And since we want to edit the mesh, we're gonna realize these instances. Cause again, if you look at the data coming out of instance on points, it's uh, just six instances. We wanna make sure that it's all uh, control point data that we can edit, okay? So step one complete. Step two, the complicated part. How do we twist this? Good question. So we want to reset the position of these points, right? The, the, the idea here, again, what are we doing? The idea here is to change the position such that it's morphing to the new twist position. So that's why we have a set position node. I'm just going to have position go to position so nothing changes. And for the twisting, as you might have guessed, well, you just type the word rotate and you're like, oh, well, one of these nodes should do it. Vector rotates the one. And what vector rotate's gonna allow us to do is change the angle with respect to the Z axis, right? So right now, if I change the angle, you can see just twists, or it doesn't really twist, it just spins things. Uh, what I wanna do is I want this to spin on the Z axis, which is already set up for us. I want it to spin on the Z axis, but in a twisty way, not in the, they're all moving uniformly. In other words, I want the amount of Z spin to change as we go vertically on the uh, Z axis. So what I can do is I can separate this by X, Y, Z, take the Z component and uh, connect that to angle. And uh, already we have something that would be pretty difficult to model ourselves. And let's up the count. So this is gonna be kind of our resolution here. Let's do a hundred. So we get a nice smooth kind of, you know those uh, Chinese finger traps where you put your finger on each end? This is how I would make uh, something like that. And maybe I'll make a Chinese finger trap tutorial. I don't know. Uh, so we have the twisting. Again, this works because uh, it's going to increase the angle that we're spinning about the z-axis as we move vertically. Um, next, all I want to do is I want to pinch this area and this area. In other words, when z is equal to 0 and when z is equal to, I, I think it's going to be 5 in this case because we made it uh, 5 units tall. Okay, so how do we do the pinching? Well, after the rotation, I'm going to multiply, I'm gonna pinch. So uh, if we close this on the X and Y axis, you can see how this is almost kind of a pinching effect. 
uh, we want that to be a function of the height, okay? So almost what we wanna do, not exactly, but almost what we wanna do is make a function, again, dependent on the Z coordinate of position, and this Z coordinate should be one, and we just attach that here. Uh, you can see that almost does what we want, because in fact, Z is zero over here, uh, but at the top, it's, it, it's expanding it five times larger. Uh, so what I want is a gradient that kind of goes vertically, where we have zero over here, in other words, pinch it, scale it by zero, and then scale it by zero over here, and then in the middle, keep it at one, is kind of the gradient we wanna make. Uh, to do that, let's uh, make the gradients. Right now, Z is going from zero to five. So let's make it, first of all, go from zero to one, so it's nice and easy to work with. Zero to one, now this is only expanding by one at the top, so it's kinda like this cone. Also, this is a good way to make an ice cream cone, honestly, if you just increase the resolution, I just thought about that. Like that is an ice cream cone, um, but whatever. So this is going from zero to one, and we want it to go from zero to one back to zero. So I'm gonna use a, nope. I'm gonna use a, a color ramp to do that. So color ramp, go from black to white to black. So black on both ends, so it's gonna be pinched to a line, and then in the middle, make it one. And by the way, pro tip, set this to ease. It's gonna look much nicer. Uh, so there you go. You can see that's kind of the, the essence of it. We've made the shape, and then finally we need these curves to have a uh, thickness. So to do that, uh, of course, we need to turn it back to a mesh. So curve to mesh. See, it's not that complicated when we kind of put it all together. So we're gonna curve to mesh. The profile curve is just gonna be a circle. And look at that, we've made a, uh, kind of looks like something you'd make in pottery class, a nice little vase. I think this would get you an A plus in the class because this seems impossible to make, honestly. So you can also use this uh, setup to make vases, but I'm just gonna make this a bit smaller. And we almost have the same problem that we did before. We're at the top, we have all this geometry connecting, uh, but you can kind of see this exposed hole. Um, exposed holes. <laughs> Um, to, to fix that, we almost want to do the same thing where we want to pinch it at the top and pinch it at the bottom and keep it the same in the middle. Uh, so to fix that, I'm just going to add a set curve radius before turning this into a mesh. So we need it to still be a curve and we could just reuse this thing from before on the radius. And then you can see that does it. So to make the, uh, animation I did at the beginning, I basically just used this effect, uh, showed geometry nodes forming it, added, you know, kind of like a sphere in the middle or something like that, and that, that that's the essence of it. So, yeah, again, the most complicated part is making this mesh. So, anyways, I think that's the essence of what I wanted to talk about today. So, let's change this to the big cam. There we go. Um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, by the way, new setup. I moved my desk, so you're going to see a different uh, backdrop. Hopefully that's fine with you guys. But uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. As always, I want to thank the patrons that fund this channel and the CG Matter channel. And let me tell you about why you should also join this patronage hood of nearly 800 people. Link in the description. Uh, when you become a patron for this channel, you get three things in return. You get early access to tutorials. You could have seen this tutorial and right now I have a, a backlog of three. This will be the third uh, tutorials. Uh, you could watch them early before other people uh, when you become a patron. Second of all, you get the blend files, so you don't have to uh, make this yourself. I'll, I'll um, put up the blend file for the animation that I did at the beginning uh, with the thing forming and the crystal. You could just get the blend file, look around, mess around with that, and at this point there are hundreds of project files and blend files since I've been doing this uh, since 2019. And third of all, you get exclusive tutorials. There's a bit of a catalog there since I've made them for a couple months. Uh, those are tutorials that are not available on either channel. Did I say this is a default cube tutorial? I think I'm going to post this on CG Matter actually. But um, either way, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for considering uh, becoming a patron or actually clicking that button. And thank you for making it all the way to the end. And uh, that's it for me. See ya.